Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. We're coming to the second unit on cloud computing. This focuses on software and systems aspects of cloud computing, whereas the previous unit was more on general issues, although they had some comments on software and systems. Um, <clears throat> so as here we have our usual slogan, we're going to use clouds. And this part of the course is telling you what clouds are. We're obviously going to run data analytics which uh, we're doing different parts of the course. We're going to do it collaboratively, because that's the nature of the, the cross-world uh, activities we indulge in. And everything is big data, because that's this course. And also everything is big data. And of course, all of these are problems. X informatics, physics informatics, or e-physics, uh, search informatics, or e-search, and so on. And that's what we're doing. And these are all, these are beautiful uh, collage that uh, like that uh, reminds us to do applications and not spend too much time on arbitrary th abstract thought. So now we look at uh, cloud computing. We did that in the previous unit. This is um, the same type of broad slide, but from an application and architecture point of view. Here we have a nice, uh, actually, German slide, but other than it's sort of obvious what it is. We have private cloud. With the one organization, private cloud with a different organization. We build a hybrid between this private and this public. The public is used by lots of different organizations, and organization B is actually organization A is sort of sitting in its own little private world. B is using partly its own world, and when when appropriate, it uses uh, the public cloud. That is either done for security issues. It does very secure proprietary issues on the private cloud and less sensitive issues on a probably uh, cheaper public cloud. Alternatively, it's just done as a so-called bursting model, that you have a private cloud of fixed size. When you have your Mother's Day problem, then you just uh, launch the extra Mother's Day applications on the public cloud. This gives you a very efficient organization, because you don't have to over-provision your private cloud. Uh, here we have a little more uh, discussion here for, about what public and private um, uh, are that uh, private are dedicated resources, which are either on premise or actually they can be. A private cloud can be part of a large public infrastructure, but just isolated so that they become um, effectively private. So it's a private component of a public infrastructure. But if it's on your own premises, you can take your university computer center and build as an on premise cloud. Um, here we have a public cloud. Uh, with its characteristics, which is, of course, the Amazons and Googles and the Azures of this world. And we've already discussed most of these um, things. We have internet access through transactions, which is just messages. We're going back and forth. Everything is service-based, which is message-based. And everything is charged using credit cards and standard e-commerce technology. Um, we try to isolate the various tenants of the cloud so there isn't bleeding between tenants, but there's, and that's of course an important security issue in public clouds, which is why you might even want to have your private cloud. Here we have another slide actually addressing somewhat a feature we already discussed that uh, the client was once a PC and a browser. Now the uh, cloud integrates everything together. We have my laptop. My iPhone, my tablet, my wife's phone and tablet, they're all integrated together on the cloud. Also, my collaborations are all cloud integrated. I just spent the early part of this morning uh, talking to people across the country on a research topic we're working on together. And then we can expect uh, this, um, this is the so-called Internet of Things. We're going to have everything active and sensing and things. And those sensor results are going to be spreading spinning off to the cloud. We know Google spent a lot of money buying a company, I think it was called Nest, which is in the Internet of Things space. We know robots are going to be cloud controlled. And this is going to be a dominant feature of clients from the tiniest sensors through the ch chunky old fashioned PCs linked up to the cloud. That's the world we're going to link with. And all those clients are going to be actually use the clouds to integrate themselves together. That's the future of collaboration. That's why I have collaborative in the slogan. The cloud is enabling collaboration. 
Here we have a little further discussion of uh, public infrastructure as a service. And we have these operating system virtualization, which is you know, dominant ones, or Zen or KVM. Uh, though on top of that, you build um, VM management here. This slide comes from Eucalyptus, or you better note that Eucalyptus is one of those. OpenStack, Open Nebula, CloudStack, Nimbus. Those are and VMware. These are alternative virtual machine management systems. And um, you have various network provisioning that's getting more sophisticated than this than when this slide was written with software-defined networking. And you write so-called service level agreements as to what you guarantee. And then you have these um, service-based interfaces which uh, accept requests uh, and uh, grant them subject to costing and service level agreements. And everything is pay as you go. You could subscribe, but normally you pay for what you use and don't pay for what you don't use. Now we come to the uh, next lesson, which is uh, further comments on clouds from a software architecture point of view.